continue to hear that. They already believed it. Earlier this month, California's governor, Gavin Newsom, sent a tweet from his office with this command, quote, going out to eat with members of your household this weekend? Don't forget to keep your mask on in between bites. Do your part to keep those around you healthy. Understand? You're eating with people you live with every day, but be certain to shield your faces as you eat for safety. That tweet is still up, by the way. They weren't kidding. Watch Newsom's fellow governor, Andrew Cuomo, the man who probably killed more Americans from coronavirus than anyone apart from the Chinese government. He explained that if you don't wear a mask, you're a murderer. I think it's disrespectful of people not to wear masks. I mean, think about it. Do I think local government should be enforcing it? And should there be sanctions? Yes. Yes. Uh, because it is a public health emergency. And I think there should be a penalty. Because you could literally kill someone. You could literally kill someone because you didn't want to wear a mask. You could literally kill someone. Literally. He said it twice. You selfishly wanted to breathe fresh air and conduct a human conversation. You are John Wayne Gacy. In Nashville, one city councilwoman suggested that citizens who don't wear masks could be charged with attempted murder. You know, I work for an organization that if they pass a virus, then they are tried for uh, murder or attempted murder if they are not told. Maybe there needs to be stronger legislation to say that if you do not wear a mask and you subject exposure of this virus to someone else, then there will be some stronger penalty as it is in other viruses that are exposed. So you thought you were smiling at someone you love. In fact, you were pulling the trigger. See you in jail, Miss Grant. Harsh words. But then science itself is harsh. Science has no regard for sentiment or public opinion. Science doesn't care about your feelings. Science is about facts, data, truth, measurable outcomes. So what is the science on masks? Well, as it happens, we have the latest for you tonight. And the science comes, interestingly, from the CDC, whose director has told you that masks were magic, more effective than vaccines. But the numbers from the CDC suggest otherwise. A new study conducted by 11 medical institutions analyzed a group of people who tested positive for COVID during the month of July. Here's the interesting part. Among those who were infected, more than 70% reported that they had, quote, always worn a mask for the preceding 14 days. Another 14.4% said they had, quote, often worn a mask. In other words, almost everyone, 85%, who got the coronavirus in July was wearing a mask, and they were infected anyway. So clearly, this doesn't work the way they tell us it works. Clearly, someone's been lying to us, many people, actually. How did this happen? Well, the short answer is we're not sure how so many people got the coronavirus while wearing masks. But there are clues, clues that our leaders appear to be ignoring. Here's one. According to a study published in April by researchers at several medical institutions, including the Cleveland Clinic, surgical masks are actually ineffective at stopping the inhalation of small airborne particles. Instead, the researchers found that surgical masks, which almost everyone is using to protect themselves from the coronavirus and not murder other people, are actually only useful from protecting users from, quote, large droplets and sprays. That's not how the coronavirus spreads. According to a letter signed by several researchers earlier this month in Science Magazine, the biggest threat from the coronavirus, quote, by far, is when it's contained in small particles that can easily bypass face masks in aerosol form. Droplets quickly fall to the ground, but aerosol lingers. The researchers wrote that the tiny particles can remain in the air, quote, for many seconds to hours like smoke and be inhaled. The particles are, quote, highly concentrated near an infected person. But aerosols containing infectious viruses can also travel more than six feet and accumulate in poorly ventilated indoor air, leading to super spreading events. So if you've been wearing a mask at the table in between bites, this might come as a surprise to you. It's not what they told you. You should also know that consensus changes. They never admit it, but it does. Science changes as we learn more. It was only a few weeks ago that the same people yelling at you now for not wearing a mask were scolding you for considering buying a mask. 
February 29th, Jerome Adams, he's the U.S. Surgeon General, tweeted this, quote, Seriously, people, stop buying masks. They are not effective in preventing the general public from catching the coronavirus. Now, at one point, we mocked him for saying that because that seemed absurd to us. If masks aren't effective, then why do surgeons wear them? But it turns out maybe he was on to something. On March 8th, Anthony Fauci told us, once again, masks are pointless. Right now in the United States, people should not be walking around with masks. You're sure of it, because people are listening really no, closely to this. And right now, people should not be walking. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. When you're in the middle of an outbreak, wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better, and it might even block a, a droplet, but it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. These people are so awful. All of us are learning about this on the fly. It was a new disease. There are a lot of things we didn't know. But to pretend that you are speaking God's word and rearrange our society on the basis of that and never acknowledge that you were completely wrong, that your assumptions were false, that's the definition of dishonesty. And it's also the hallmark of the people who lead us. They know nothing. Alex Berenson, by contrast, knows quite a lot about this subject. He's the author of Unreported Truths About COVID-19 and Lockdowns Part 2, Updated Examinations of Lockdowns as a Strategy, worth reading. He joins us tonight. Alex, thanks so much for coming up. So this study from the CDC does seem like big news to me. And at the very least, my, my quick and dirty read is what we're doing isn't working. Why has this not received any coverage? Well, it hasn't received coverage because the media doesn't want to cover anything, you know, aside from you and a few other people, don't want to cover anything that says that masks might not be, you know, God's gift to all of us. But, but I will say this, it's one study, um, it's what's called a case controlled study. So what happened is they looked at the 160 people who had gotten the virus and they compared them to essentially a control group of 160 people who hadn't gotten the virus. Yes. And essentially the mask wearing was exactly the same in both arms. So that suggests the mask provided no benefit, at least right. in the study. And, and if, for example, you look at the people who were close to people with a known case of the coronavirus, many more of those people in the arm of people who got the virus were close to somebody who had the virus. It was like 42% versus 14%. So that's what you would expect, right? If you're close to somebody who has the virus, you're more likely to get the virus. In this case, masks seem to provide no different, no benefit, no difference between the two arms. That's just one study, but it is, it is telling. Here's what I'll say. There's a very big study, a randomized controlled trial out of Denmark that was finished in June that was supposed to demonstrate whether or not masks worked for, inf for protecting the wearer from infection. So several thousand people are going to wear masks, several thousand people not wear masks. You compare at the end who was infected, who wasn't. That study was finished in June. It was supposed to be published in August. It has disappeared. There has been no publication of the results. I don't know what the study says, but I think it's reasonable to speculate that if the study showed that masks worked, every scientific journal in the world would want to print it. And there's a, and this is, this is part of a much bigger problem, Tucker. The problem is that science and scientists who are outside what the public health authorities and the media want are being almost systematically shut down. And this came up in the discussion about herd immunity, where a very good scientist in the UK couldn't get a paper published suggesting that herd immunity uh, she couldn't get it published in a journal suggesting that, you know, we might reach herd immunity at much lower rates of infection than the 50 to 70 percent that people have speculated. This and, and, and you're seeing this with the Great Barrington Declaration, too, which I, I you know, I know you've talked about and we know about that, that, that the scientists who published that who are very, very well known, who are at Stanford and Oxford and Harvard, who have sterling credentials, are being, you know, they're being tarred and feathered by other scientists. I don't understand what has happened to scientific debate, not just in this country, but around the world, where if you have an opinion, a well-backed, a well-researched opinion that's outside the consensus, you can't get it published in a major journal. Well, that's just witchcraft, isn't it? I mean, at that point, that's not science, right? 
uh, I mean, science should be a discussion, and it should be. Yes. And you see this in um, yet another way, Tucker, which is that people who who publish studies, who actually the authors of studies showing that masks are ineffective, or who've written articles saying, you know, there was this article in the New England Journal of Medicine at the beginning of April, and it essentially said universal masking is ineffective. Probably, it is. It is essentially a sop to the public's fears. The, the the people who wrote that article walked back that conclusion, which was extremely clear two months later. So what kind of pressure was put on them, or what kind of pressure are they putting on themselves? Science is not going to work if scientists are censoring themselves or censoring other scientists, and that First seems time. to be where we're going right now. It's frightening. You, you're one of the very few standing in the face of that. Good luck. Alex Berenson, good to see you tonight. <laughs> Tucker, thanks for having me.